in the winter season, around December 25th, the people celebrated the winter solstice. And so the winter solstice would come about somewhere from December 21st, and it goes all the way to around January 6th or so. And so the people of the North would celebrate different holidays, have different occasions based upon the winter solstice. I went to Norway and spent some time with the Muslims in Oslo. In the winter time, there is a period where there is no light. You are literally in darkness 24 hours of the day. And this stretches for a period of time. Now, could you imagine if you're living in Alaska or living in Canada or living in Norway and you don't have central heating and the cold is outside, it's darkness around you. It's a terrible time and, and every family would probably lose somebody from the cold and disease during that season. And so when the sun starts to come out, the people now are looking at the sun as a life-giving force. And so during that time, a number of ceremonies were held in northern countries. In the far north was the Feast of the Twelve Nights, which stretched from December 25th to January 6th. Also in ancient Greece, there was the Bacchanalia, which was held for their god Bacchus, the god of wine and sport and play. The Romans had the Saturnalia for their god Saturn. And so you find during these times that the people held ceremonies in the north, they would burn our bonfires because the fire represents the light, the life-giving force for those who worship nature. Also in the north, they recognized that there was one tree that despite the cold would still remain alive. The evergreen tree, the fir tree. And so in some cases they would take this fir tree believing that there was powers of life within the tree and they would put it in their homes, set it there and put a light on the top of it or they would make mistletoes and put them over their doorways, a type of what we would call ta'wiz or tamima. It is an amulet, hoping that this fir tree, this so-called life-giving force would protect them from the danger of the winter. And so their ceremonies developed around this. And this went on for hundreds of years. One of the interesting individuals is Mithra or Mithras. This is a very mysterious character. And when you look at history, you find that this individual was supposed to be the sun god himself. And they had a special sacrament made up of bread and wine. And they would make this drink during this time and supposedly died for the sins of the people. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? But when you try to find Mitra or Mithras in the encyclopedias, they, through state intervention, erase the name. Why is this? That is because after the time of Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, when the message began to spread and they went north, and you'll see within historical writings that Barnabas, one of his disciples, met a man named Saul, who later called himself Paul. Paul said he saw Jesus on the Damascus road. And he went to the disciples, but the disciples turned against Paul. Only Barnabas stayed with him. But when Paul and Barnabas went into Greece, Barnabas left him. Now, what is the reason why they all left him? Many people say, well, they left him because he was Saul before and he used to torture the early followers of Isa alayhi salam. But also you can see, and if you look at present day Christianity, that most of the concepts of the Trinity, of the blood sacrifice, the original sin, and most of the concepts which relate to more than one God are coming through Paul. The preachers are quoting Paul sometimes more than Jesus during their sermons. And so Barnabas left Paul. And somewhere in the early days in Rome or Greece, those missionaries who were teaching the teachings of Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, met with this force coming from the north. And so you will see in ancient Roman history, that in some cases the Roman Emperor would go out to the Colosseum and the gladiators would be fighting each other and everybody's cheering for the gladiators. One of the terrible things happening during these uh, rituals at the Colosseum is that they would bring the Christians out, literally men, women and children and feed them to hungry animals. They would take a hyena or a wolf or a lion and get it hungry and crazy and beat it 
and then send it out on the people. And they would literally cheer and watch as the animal ripped the bodies apart, tear the bodies apart. And so somewhere along the line, somebody who couldn't take the torture, who felt that maybe we can win these people over, made a compromise. And you start to see changes going on from the early part of the Christian era in Southern Europe, where the major ceremonies held by the nature worshiping people are combined with Christian names and Christian ceremonies. And therefore what comes forth to us is a mixture with the two streams coming together where you get a monotheistic name or a monotheistic character with a pagan ceremony. And so the mixture of this together is what is giving us the present day holidays that we see. In the story coming in the Quran, in chapter 19, in verses 24 to 25, and we see the mention of the story of Mary, that Miriam, may Allah be pleased with her, was a virgin, and she had dedicated her life to the worship of one God, prayer and fasting. And by the power of Allah, that the Creator breathed His Spirit into her, and He said, Be and it is, she conceived Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, without a father, without a man. That is the belief of Islam. When she felt the pain of the pregnancy, the angel came to her and told her to go outside of the city. She went outside of the city to a remote area. And there she found a, a palm tree and she found water. And it was speaking about a type of rutub or a type of dates. It's at the height of the heat that the dates become ripe. And so it's at that time that she gave birth to Isa alayhi salam. Even in the Christian traditions, they have the belief that the shepherds were tending their flocks outside. And in Palestine, you cannot keep your flocks outside in the wintertime in the evening. You bring them in because it's cool at night. And so it was the warm weather. It was also the time of the taxes in the north. So from different points of view, we understand that Isa alayhi salam was not born during the winter season. He was born in the warm weather. So who was it that was born in the winter season? Who is that character now? Number one, you have to understand this concept of Saturn, the concept of Bacchus. When they are portrayed, they're usually portrayed as a heavy set man with a white beard. And when in the Sistine Chapel, uh, Michelangelo drew his picture, you could see the long flowing beard and there are actually pictures of this man on a sled being drawn by snakes with wings. Snakes do not normally fly. Sound familiar to you now, doesn't it? He's performing miracles. He's coming out on December 25th, which is not the birthday of Isa alayhi salam, has nothing to do with Christianity. And he is representing riotous fun, drunken reverie. And so what happens on Christmas, the Christmas season? especially in America, people today are not even thinking about Isa alayhi salam. They're not even thinking about Jesus. They're looking how they can get drunk. On Christmas, what is going on? In the Caribbean and many parts, if they offer you a Christmas pudding or Christmas pie or Christmas drink, watch out. Because it's probably laced with rum or wine. Now this riotous occasion went so far that the Christian church banned it. And the Church of England actually banned it all the way to 1647. It was prohibited in England to celebrate Christmas because they saw Christmas as being a pagan holiday. We hear about the name of Saint Nicholas. According to some historical reports, Saint Nicholas was a Christian bishop who lived in the fourth century. He used to spend his time in prayer and fasting and he loved children and he spent his time dealing with children. There's another concept, which is even deeper than that. And that is that Saint Nicholas himself is actually coming from the ancient writings of Beowulf, which are done in the Scandinavian region. We find the name Nick or Nickel or Nicker. He was known as a demon, the demon of the North. And so in Germany and in many of the Northern countries, 
They would tell their children in the wintertime, don't go outside because if you do, Nickel will come along, he'll capture you, put you in his bag and take you away. And so they used it as a negative concept. And so the Germans also, they depicted him as a man with red fur coat and he was the essence of evil. And the poor children are taught that St. Nicholas is gonna come down your chimney. Most people don't have chimneys in Miami anyway. But a 350 pound man is gonna come down your chimney and bring you presents and keep his clothes white and red and go to all of the homes in the area and put presents in your stockings and put presents under your tree and then fly back out into space. Flies off into the night. And the father, the poor father, who sweat and toiled all year to get you the presents, gets no credit for the present given to the child. And many of us were raised thinking, believing in this. And the people say, well, you know, it, it's Christmas. Don't you like to have fun? You want to stop the children from having fun? What kind of people are you? What are you teaching the children? You are using the name of Jesus using the name of Isa alayhi salam, and you are using a figure who historically is the devil. The devil himself, wal iyadu billah. Isa alayhi salam is described as a very humble person. Most of the time he didn't wear shoes, only one or two changes of clothing, eating very simple food, fasting most of the time. So what we are actually seeing is that the Christmas occasion was actually the time of evil. It was the time of the belief in the Saturnalia and the Bacchanalia. And because of this, they shifted the occasion, all of their feelings and their merriment and their evil to New Year's Eve. The Prophet ﷺ, when he spoke about Ar-Ruqya, Wa-Tama'im, Wa-Tiwala, he said all of these things are shirk. That if you hang amulets thinking that this Ta'weez or this amulet is going to protect you from something, then you are actually giving power to the creation of Allah and taking it away from the Creator. And so the Prophet peace be upon him named all of these things, the superstitions, all of these type of things are the other stream which goes away from monotheism, from the belief in one God and takes you into another religion. When you are wishing Merry Christmas to them, you are agreeing that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was born on the 25th of December and you are agreeing that he is the begotten son of God, which is shirk. If you don't know what Christmas is celebrated for, like by mistake, if you don't know it is alcohol and you think it is Pepsi and you have it, Allah may forgive you. But if you know it, and then if you wish Merry Christmas, it is haram. And you think you're building relationship, you know what you're doing? You're building a place in the Jahannam. So therefore, brother, for reaching any good means, you never have to adopt wrong means. You have to go as the guidance of the Quran and the Sunnah.